final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 8736 in the name of John Finney on Lift Lives for Good. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And if you are ready, Mr Finney, uh, seven minutes please or thereby. Thank you, President Officer. Can I start by referring uh, members to my register of interest as a, a member of Amnesty? can also thank members from across the Chamber for their support for this motion and to Oxfam for the briefing. Uh, in that briefing, we hear that Oxfam's vision is a just world without poverty, and I do not think anyone would take issue with that. Uh, they want a world where people feel empowered to improve their own lives so that they, in turn, can help others in their communities, setting a motion of chain, a reaction of change. We know that Oxfam enjoy considerable support across the country through their network of shops and through their volunteers. And our recurring theme of the approach they take is to help encourage self-help. As they say, it's more than just delivering aid. It's about creating this chain reaction. And as they would like to see, and I hope we all would, grassroots action resulting in global decision-making, which is affecting uh, lasting change. Um, Oxfam have a history of involvement in uh, campaigning. They have been involved with the Make Poverty History and Enough Food for Everyone IF campaigns. And this particular campaign, Lift Life for Good, is a fundraising campaign and it is a start of, of an ambitious new drive to tackle the root causes of poverty in 2014. Now, they make very clear in, in their um, excellent uh, briefing and in the report that has been compiled that they see the two biggest threats to poverty being the growing gap um, between the richest and poorest and the damage caused to the poor uh, people by climate change. Um, um, whilst there have been some um, economic gains in middle-income countries, this has not resulted in lifting many people out of poor. So, um, in, in the report, they talk about political leadership in the UK. I know that um, people in this chamber, and I hope in the other devolved chambers too, would see that there is a very clear and supporting role for them too. And with regard to um, equality, they talk about putting equality at the heart of decision making, tackling the unfair UK and global tax rules that fuel inequality, and promote universal free public health care and education services to tackle inequality. There are others, um, but I will move to climate change in the limited time I have to say that in relation to that, they encourage, and again, I hope we would also support investment in a low carbon future, they say for the UK, but for Scotland, the UK, and indeed the planet, invest in climate resilience and low carbon development overseas, and promote ambitious global agreements on climate change and sustainable energy access. Now, there have been some very positive moves in this chamber, but uh, I do not think we should be complacent on that. The world produces enough food for everyone, uh, yet one in eight, that is 840 million people, go to bed hungry each night. And, and it is estimated that climate change could also increase child malnutrition by 20 per cent, eliminating improvements that might otherwise have occurred by uh, campaigns such as this. A very damning statistic that we hear of is that for every $6 of subsidy for fossil fuels, renewable energy enjoys only a $1 subsidy. So the sort of thing they're talking about is, um, and some of the examples are an innovative dairy program in Sri Lanka, a revolutionary rice growing um, system in Liberia, seed growing cooperatives in Nepal, and all of these are designed to be catalysts to lift the entire community. Um, they talk about the term smart aid, um, and they need a concerted effort uh, for the ripple effect that some of that good work has. Um, and the important thing is empowering communities. They also talk about reappraising how aid works and seeing its transformative um, power rather than being a single action, a short term issue, um, helping people build skills and help themselves. Uh, Oxfam says at the heart of what Oxfam does and has been doing for many years is this approach. Um, and and we have all been involved in things like gifting a goat, hens, bags of seeds and the like. And they, I think, rather harshly in themselves believe that they have not communicated that model of growth particularly well. Uh, they talk about the fact that in the last 10 years, 50 million more children in Africa have benefited from education. And clearly education is at the root of all uh, the, the potential that we have for improvements. Talk of a global fund for HIV, which blights particularly the continent of Africa, saving 3,000 lives a year. Talk about debt cancellation and the freed millions that that, that releases for um, 
positive work in these countries, but I think many of us feel that could go a lot further. It's not just abroad that Oxfam works. They, they, they work across Scotland, and there's some very fine examples. Govan features a lot, Tea in the Pot, Gale, Gal Gale Trust, the, the wonderful traditional sailing boats we've seen out there, Sun, Sunny uh, in Govan Radio, and in my own part of the world, Loch Boysdale Amenity Trust, a very interesting project there where they're funding the purchase of trees for crofters to build shelter belts for fence croft and common grazings and amenity planting as well. So there's grants that are involved with other partner agencies. This particular appeal, the mother appeal, uh, will give mothers worldwide the lift they need to use their power to change the future. And I think we would all agree that mo mothers are a powerful, motivating group, not only within families, but also within their communities. The hope is to raise £10 million, and the UK government state they will match donations up to £5 million. And I think uh, um, it's not often, perhaps, I do find myself praising the UK government, but uh, they are to be complimented for that and the approach they have indeed taken to retaining the, the overseas aid budget. And that relates to, to money donated before March 31st, uh, um, or to items donated before March 31st and sold by the end of April to qualify. Now, there's a whole new vocabulary associates itself with this particular campaign. Now, certainly for me, swapping, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, which is bringing an old item of clothing into m and store each time you buy something new. All of that clothing goes to Oxfam. Um, I, and then I'm told thereafter you place your item in the Schwab drop box. It's, uh, um, I'm sure there'll be adequate instructions for anyone wishing to help. The particular three projects to be targeted are in Bangladesh, Tajikistan and Zambia. And I, I think we would all understand that there are a range of problems there where um, it's, it's important that we provide assistance. Oxfam um, has a, a very wide community. It's very well known across Scotland. Uh, they provide statistics and breakdown of income from their shops. I'm delighted to see that Oban, town where I used to live, features in the top 10. They have a breakdown of their record shops, uh, their clothes shops, their bookshops and the like. Interestingly, they quote a survey from last year, and the survey says that supporting a charity is a thing that uplifts people's spirits, and they found that uplifted people's spirits in 2013. So I hope we'll all take the opportunity to have our spirits uplifted in the coming years and in future years, and I hope we'll all support this particular good campaign. Thank you. Many thanks. <coughs> I now call on Rob Gibson to be followed by Jackie Minutes, four minutes. Jackie Bailey, four minutes or thereby, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I've, uh, pleasure in uh, supporting this motion and congratulate John Finney on uh, proposing uh, lift lives for good. People do feel empowered, I think, uh, to improve their own lives. And if they can do, then the idea of making this a continuous cycle is obviously part of the belief that uh, we have communities and that communities are at the heart of the way we live. People in the developing world have that potential and they need to get a first step, even a little lift, which would allow them to make that change, which would allow them to empower their family, which would allow them uh, to bring forward a good idea in their communities. And I was struck by um, some school uh, students yesterday uh, at Tain Royal Academy who came up to myself uh, who was proposing uh, the yes idea and also to the no idea candidate, asking us how we could deal with inequality. That's the thing that struck them most. And when we say that uh, in Britain as a whole, it makes the society less functional, and it could be indeed, some people say, dysfunctional. Imagine what that can be in societies that have uh, no ability to invest at all that strikes home to me as being a worldwide phenomenon that we must address and the Oxfam have addressed in this particular way. Now, we can see in the past ways in which the rich have tried to help the poor, not in terms of uh, the, the relief for uh, disasters, but uh, by uh, misplaced notions about agriculture that don't fit, uh, by imposing technologies such as GM crops, which only um, enrich the multinationals. But... We've seen more recently in Africa things like the use of uh, mobile phones and Kindles, which have allowed uh, communication and education 
and indeed the fundamentals of cooperatives that allow people to be able to organise work or owner uh, lives. And that must be one of the best ways that people can get a lift. We have excellent examples from our own country and there are growing examples in, in many of the countries which were mentioned by the proposer. Now, I would suggest that uh, the chain reaction we're seeking is down to changing the way that people uh, look at uh, overseas aid, as, it's, as it used to be called. And I, I thank Oxfam for, for showing us that uh, this is not about handouts, as some people perceive. And their briefing makes this perfectly clear that good aid works to understand the long-term values of the work which uh, is brought forward by uh, lifting lives for good. So I'd just like to finally say for the moment, so that other people have got things that they can add to the whole of this debate, to say that there's no excuse for people in the north of Scotland not coming into Marks and Spencers in Inverness, which is our nearest shop, and uh, do some swapping and uh, make sure that if they're coming, that they do that there, but also to visit the Oxfam shop as well uh, in Inverness, uh, as it's the only one near to, to where my constituency is. So if it uh, makes you feel good about going into uh, the Oxfam shop and giving a little, then this lifting lives for good will benefit from your cash and they need it, we need it. The world will be a more equal place, a little, if we do so. Many thanks. <clears throat> now call on Jackie Bailey to be followed by Jean Urquhart. Um, Presiding officer, like Rob Gibson, can I start by congratulating John Finney on securing the debate and for stealing everything that I was going to say. Um, but, but it bears repeating, John, so, so I will do so. Can I also commend Oxfam for their Lift Lives for Good campaign? Um, because as John Finney rightly said, their vision, which I believe is one that we all share, is of a just world without poverty. Now, people empowered to do something about their own circumstances, and then in turn um, help lift others out of poverty in their own communities is an extremely powerful tool. Oxfam describe it as a chain reaction. Others might suggest it is indeed a virtuous circle. One thing is clear though, it has the potential to change lives. It has the potential to lift people out of poverty for good. And I share with you um, one local example of, of a community I used to work with where, where actually we empowered people um, with training, pro providing vocational training and non-vocational training, um, and lifted a huge number of women who previously had no qualifications out of poverty by equipping them for the job market and many of them went on to secure jobs and there's one I think of in particular um, she had three children she had no qualifications to her name she is now a teacher and those three children have a very different role model but it's not just the power of what she did to her family the chain reaction that came from that um, actually impacted on the whole community and she now is giving a lot back to that community herself. So it does work. Um, it does change lives. The point of the campaign, of course, is to raise funds so that Oxfam can continue their good work to tackle the root causes of poverty. Um, their approach is based on smart aid. Again, John Finney's touched on that, helping people to help themselves. And I do think if you do one thing and you have one intervention and then you all disappear, it's not going to be as long-lasting or as sustainable as if you do something that that community can itself carry forward. And Oxfam give us a number of different examples. My favourite one was the dairy co-ops in Sri Lanka, where a family receives a cow, um, a very useful thing, training in its care. And actually what you do is you give them an asset, but you give them the skills to use that asset to benefit their family and their community. I'm not quite sure whether that would work in Scotland, but I'm sure in Sri Lanka um, it is absolutely appropriate. But you know, and we all know, there are lots of demands on Oxfam's funds. Um, it is right again for John Finney to highlight some of the achievements. You know, in the last 10 years, 50 million more children in Africa going to school. They've responded, Oxfam have, to twice as many disasters as it did a decade ago. And through all that, 
they're ensuring that 4.3 million people have improved access to clean water, 120,000 people helped with emergency services, um, and overall, just in 2012-13 alone, they reached 13.5 million people across 54 countries. Now, that is a huge achievement. But we all know that that work needs to continue and the demands continue to grow. Now, like John Finney, I don't often praise presiding officer of the UK government. Um, I think it would be a cold day in hell before I praise the UK government. But on this occasion, let me unreservedly welcome their commitment to match fund Oxfam's efforts in raising funds. And I just wonder that if we actually manage to raise five million through Oxfam, indeed six million through Oxfam, whether we couldn't encourage the UK government to actually match it and not put a cap at five million alone. But we know Scotland has a very positive history of giving generously. Whether it's through Oxfam's network of 20, 51 shops, 12 bookshops of which I use one regularly, and two specialist music shops, um, we do have a very positive culture of giving. All I can do is add to um, the words of both John Finney and Rob Gibson when, when they suggested that if there's nothing else we do, pop into Marks and Spencers, pop into one of the Oxfam shops, give generously because it has the power to transform lives. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on Jean Arcott to be followed by Jamie McGregor. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I too would like to thank uh, John Finney for securing this debate. Um, Oxfam's record in fighting poverty is quite exceptional. I think as an organisation it's highlighted more than any other as to the work that has yet to be done. But we should also celebrate uh, Oxfam's work in showing that deprivation isn't just about money. It's also about mental and physical health, a feeling of safety and security, and a connectedness to family and community. Oxfam's work on the Humankind Index, which released its second annual results for Scotland in June last year, gives us a vital way to understand this complexity. GDP growth is no good if all the growth is going to the rich or if wealth is being created only by breaking the backs and spirits of working people. This week, Oxfam revealed that the 84 richest people in the world own as much as the poorest half of the human race, 3.5 billion people put together. The Scottish Government's stated priority is sustainable economic growth, and I hope one day that we will see that extended to be sustainable human well-being. One idea that was raised in the meeting in the Parliament last week is worth serious consideration, a universal basic income or citizen's income. This is an amount that is enough to cover basic needs paid to every citizen without means testing. It would recognise that unpaid work like raising children and looking after elderly relatives support lifelong learning, reduce inequality and give us a real chance of abolishing poverty altogether. A mission in which less radical ideas have repeatedly failed. Oxfam's Lift Lives for Good campaign recognises the importance of building skills and community links as well as providing aid. And here in Scotland, two of Oxfam's partners in Scotland recognise the importance of well-being beyond money. Tea in the Pot and Govan helps women who have mental health problems share their experiences and ideas. And not only does this fight loneliness and improve well-being on its own, it also means people who are normally excluded from decision-making, ignored by officials, can work together to make their voice heard and challenge the policies and conditions that damage their well-being. So let's celebrate Oxfam often and regularly, but let's work harder on our national performance framework and in introducing some of the key elements that people themselves have declared uh, a priority for them, which is not more money, but actually uh, other senses and areas and issues of well-being that Oxfam have highlighted. Thank you. Thank you. Now call on Jimmy McGregor to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Um, Thank you, um, Presiding Officer. I, too, congratulate John Finney on securing today's debate. I'm so glad that we're having a debate about Oxfam because it's such a wonderful organisation and all the people who volunteer to work for it uh, are wonderful as well. 
and I'm pleased to join John Finney and other colleagues in paying tribute to the work they do, and specifically to welcome the Lift Lives for Good campaign, which many of us will have seen highlighted on the TV in the last few weeks in very effective advertising. Um, and I also commend um, all my constituents in the Highlands and Islands who donate to Oxfam, either financially or through giving second-hand goods or by volunteering in our Oxfam shops. I don't know if they appreciate some of the pairs of trousers I give them, but um, I certainly go ahead and do that myself. Um, and uh, I, uh, I was delighted to learn, um, which was mentioned by John Finney, that Oban uh, was in the top ten performing Oxfam shops. That's my local town. And it take, took in £88,943 in sales in the period between April and September. The Oban shop has a particularly good second-hand book section uh, where many bargains can be picked up. And Oxfam's briefing for today's debate emphasising how the Lift Lives for Good campaign aims to show how smart aid actually works and to highlight practical examples of Oxfam's project work. Uh, Jackie Bailey mentioned the cow um, setting up of dairy cooperatives in Sri Lanka uh, through the provision of a cow for families and also giving training, seed growing cooperatives in Nepal and the conversion of former swamps in Liberia into rice paddies. Susanna Edwards, a Liberian farmer in one of the very poorest regions of Liberia who has been helped by Oxfam, says it's better to have your own farm than to have to buy rice. When they empower you, you begin to work and you get a lot of food. Through the food, you get money, which means your children can go to school. I think it's important for all charities working internationally with those in poverty to demonstrate to the public here the tangible impacts of their work on people and communities. And I'm pleased Oxfam, through Lift Lives for Good, is doing this in a very clear and a very impressive manner Enabling some of the world's poorest people to grow the food required to feed themselves and their families is a very big part of the work Oxfam is doing. And this is going to be increasingly important as we go forward, not least as some studies suggest climate change might increase the number of people at risk of hunger by up to 20% by 2050. I'm pleased that John Finney's motion notes that the UK government is match funding all money raised from Oxfam shops during this campaign period. This is to be warmly welcomed. The UK government's commitment to international aid and development has been impressive, and I would wish to mention in particular the UK's very significant investment in international climate finance for, um, for the funding of that, specifically to help developing countries pursue low carbon growth and adapt to the impacts of climate change and our response to the humanitarian crisis continuing to ravage so many in Syria. The UK has committed over 600 million to help those affected by that conflict, and this is the UK's largest ever response to a humanitarian crisis. And I will conclude again by thanking Oxfam for the work it does, and by encouraging constituents from across the Highlands and Islands and everywhere else to consider supporting the Lift Lives for Good campaign which I wish every success in the period ahead. Thank you very much. I now call on Liam MacArthur, after which we move to closing speeches. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. And like others, can I uh, warmly congratulate uh, John Finney, uh, not just on uh, his motion and offering Parliament an opportunity to debate that motion, uh, but for covering, I think, many of the issues uh, that we all uh, were looking to cover in our own uh, contributions. But uh, I, I think that goes a long way to uh, underscoring uh, John Finney's personal commitment to the issues uh, under discussion uh, this evening. I think the point being made about whether it's a, a chain reaction or a virtuous uh, cycle uh, is very well made uh, and should indeed inform the way we uh, approach uh, this debate. It is about uh, the longer term uh, developing self-help. And, and I think Rob Gibson made some some interesting comments in that regard. I know from uh, my own experience uh, visiting Malawi that there were different facets to the way in which international aid was being delivered. So one would uh, look on the one hand at the uh, antiretroviral programme, which thankfully is beginning to get some traction there. But uh, without the investment made through the fertiliser programme, there wasn't the foodstuffs 
drugs there um, that were absolutely essential uh, for making that antiretroviral uh, uh, programme work and tackle the instance of, of HIV uh, AIDS. Uh, in terms of uh, looking further uh, forward, uh, the, the, the issues of, of education were absolutely paramount and therefore the investment going into uh, the, the, the building and expanding of the, the school's network and uh, supporting more children, not just through primary school but onto secondary school, I think was a natural and necessary development of that programme. Uh, and more recently still, I know of uh, a community group in my own constituency uh, which is looking to fund uh, solar power packs for supporting uh, mobile uh, telephones uh, in the north of, of Malawi. So I think what we're seeing is, is a quite um, logical extension of what international aid is doing in some of those uh, developing uh, countries. Um, I, I think if I maybe concentrate uh, for a second on the uh, on the, um, the, the mother appeal and the, the lift lives uh, for good. I understand there's an umbrella covering uh, a range of, of, of different uh, initiatives, but being run in conjunction with MNS, which perhaps is uh, slightly less accessible for some of my constituents uh, than uh, it is for uh, those of other MSPs, aiming to raise 10 million by Mother's Day uh, on the 30th of March, encouraging people to contribute, but also celebrate motherhood uh, at, at the same time. Focusing, as John Finney said, on projects in Bangladesh, Tajiji, and, and rural Zambia. I, I think in the case of Bangladesh, where many of the poor households uh, headed by women depend very much on, on livestock and encouraging and supporting them to uh, form uh, dairy producer groups uh, and work cooperatively. Likewise, in uh, Tajikistan, uh, focusing on smallholders, this time helping women, fruit and vegetable farmers to unite uh, and sell collectively, um, becoming more than the, 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 the sum of their parts. Accessing finance and business training as well, which has long-term benefits. Uh, and Zambia, the women in the Copper Belt province, uh, training them in soya and dairy farming techniques, providing information on crop rotation uh, and water con uh, conservation, which I think uh, will help build resilience, not least to the climate change impacts that uh, were referred to by Rob Gibson and others. Uh, so the aim here is to raise five million through public uh, donations through MNS or direct to, to Oxfam. But as others have mentioned, this is backed by the UK Aid Match programme, taking up to 10 million. Launched in, in September last year, this follows a successful pilot uh, covering 17 charities uh, and around 40 million pounds of donation. This aims to give 120 million to UK charities over the next three years uh, by match funding up to 5 million, the value raised across a variety of projects. I think it sensibly also ring fences allocations for smaller projects uh, in uh, one of the 26 developing uh, countries. Um, and it will give real impetus to fundraising e efforts as people do tend to give more uh, if they're encouraged that their donations will be matched uh, by additional funds. Now, I recognise in times of austerity there are those who question the legitimacy of using public money to support those in other countries. They argue that this should be left to the discretion of individuals and that funding would be better deployed at home. But I simply do not accept that even our own interests are best served by looking inward and turning our backs on those in desperate need of our help. Thankfully, most people in the UK agree, with over 60% backing the UK government's commitment to spending 0.7% of national income on international aid. This may be, as say, the children have suggested, because it's in our DNA. Now, that may or may not be the case. What is no, in no doubt at all is the benefit that this aid, that good aid, as Rob Gibson rightly pointed out, is delivering. In 2012, UK aid prevented 2.7 million mothers and children from going hungry. It vaccinated 12 million children against killer diseases and supported more than 5 million children to go to school by building classrooms, training teachers and providing cash grants to poor families. I think we should all recognise that success, which should embolden us, I think, to do more. Uh, so I welcome this debate. I congratulate John Finney uh, once again on allowing it to take place and allowing Jackie Bailey uh, to, uh, the long overdue opportunity to raise her voice in praise of the UK coalition uh, government uh, and to thank uh, the aid organisations doing such invaluable, invaluable work uh, throughout uh, the developing world and in particular to Oxfam and wish them every success with their Lift Lives uh, for Good campaign. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you. I now call on the Minister to make the closing speech. Minister Margaret Burgess, please, on behalf of the Government. Six, seven minutes. Okay, thank you, Presiding Officer. 
Um, and I'm actually pleased to be able to close this debate on behalf of the Scottish Government. And like others, I would thank um, John Finney for bringing this debate to the Chamber uh, and putting this motion forward, which is one that I wholeheartedly support. And I think members during this debate have outlined very clearly how this com campaign can help. Um, sometimes a small amount does set off that chain reaction, which we've uh, Oxfam are talking about and we've heard about and I think um, Jackie Bailey in her speech talked about how in her community she'd seen something here that has improved that uh, altered the lives of individuals and their family lifted them out of poverty but also impacted in the wider community and I think programs like this in the, in the underdeveloped countries or developing countries, it doesn't just make a change to their country and their community, but it's actually impacting on the world, which is making the world a better place, which is what we all want to see. I should say at the outset that Hamza Yousaf, the Minister for Inter International Development, would have liked to have been here today, but he's currently on a visit to Malawi and, Z and Zambia, representing Scotland's work in those countries and seeing for himself some of the challenges the communities in the developing world are facing and the work being done to help them. During his visit, he'll be meeting with Oxfam country director in Zambia to hear firsthand about some of the good work Oxfam is doing to support communities in dealing with impacts of climate change, work which is supported by Scottish Government funding. Oxfam is a key delivery part partner for the Scottish Government's international development and climate justice funds, and the project in Zambia is just one of a number of Oxfam initiatives that we are supporting, which are making a real difference to people's lives in many parts of the world. In Tanzania, Oxfam is receiving 1.3 million Scottish Government funding to provide food security for farmers through a partnership arrangement with the local government and private companies. In Pakistan, we are giving Oxfam £350,000 to assist small-scale farmers to improve their productivity, while in Malawi, we are providing Oxfam with £400,000 to deliver a project which is focused on addressing the needs of vulnerable women who have been affected by HIV and AIDS. And of course, this is just a flavour of the work that Oxfam does around the world, which is having a huge impact on people's lives, reducing poverty and fighting inequality wherever it exists. That's work to which the Scottish Government contributes globally, not just through the funding provided by the Scottish Government, but also through the contribution of Scottish taxpayers to the UK Government's <coughs> development assistance programmes, and of course, through donations and purchases made by people in Oxfam's 51 shops with a thousand trained volunteers, which we have up and down the country, and which members have mentioned and uh, commented on today. And last year, Oxfam celebrated 50 years of working in Scotland. And in that time, they have done a marvellous job in raising awareness among the general public here of the inequalities that sadly persist in many parts of our world. They played a crucial, crucial role in highlighting the problem of global hunger through last year's Enough Food for Everyone If campaign, which influenced the Scottish Government's decision to give funding to the six development education centres in Scotland, which provide training and support for Scottish teachers to equip our young people to become global citizens and be aware of the challenges faced by our world and the role that we can all play in helping to tackle them. The Make Poverty History campaign in 2005 is another example of how Oxfam have worked with organisations to help draw attention here in Scotland to the issues facing people in the developing world. And Oxfam have this a track record of delivering and a track record of dedication and commitment as well as passion to make a difference to people's lives throughout the world. And I can see this passion reflected in the Living Lives for Good campaign that has now been launched. The campaign rightly highlights the, highlights the two biggest threats to ending poverty, the growing gap between the richest and poorest in the world and the damage caused to poor people by climate change. The Scottish Government takes both of these issues very seriously and right now our £9 million International Development Fund is focused on helping some of the poorest people in the sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. The Scotland's Future publication sets out clearly what action this government would take in an independent Scotland to help the world's poorest people, including a commitment to spend 0.7% of our gross national income on overseas aid, to ensure that all of our policies across government 
don't harm countries in the developing world, promote gender equality, and give careful consideration to the question of unjust debts. We also fully support the Living Lives for Good campaign's focus on highlighting the issue of climate change. The Scottish Government strongly recognises the voices of those who are in the front line of the impacts of climate change. They are suffering from a changing environment caused in, causing increasingly erratic weather patterns, crop failures, water shortages and newly spreading diseases. Our world-leading £3 million Climate Justice Fund is a recognition of the injustice of climate change and those who have done least to cause the problem are being affected most by its impacts. The fund is already helping mitigate the impacts of climate change for people in Malawi and, Zambab and Zambia. And last October, the First Minister announced a doubling of the Climate Change Justice Fund, which will support further support for vulnerable com communities in sub-Saharan Africa. And to conclude, Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government is pleased to support this motion and would like to commend the work of Oxfam in drawing attention to the issues of global poverty and inequality through this campaign. I would encourage everyone to get swapping, and I'll certainly be doing that. And as a government, we are determined to do what we can to make a difference. And I'm pleased that through this motion and today's bait, this Parliament will encourage the people of Scotland, I hope, to support Oxfam's Lifting Lives for Good campaign in its aim to make an impact on poverty around the world. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all. And I close this meeting of Parliament.